everyone, welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. In this week's tutorial, I'm gonna walk you through the steps of taking your textures. If you followed along a couple weeks ago, we created some grit textures. So I'm gonna show you how to take a scan of the textures that we created and convert it into a working texture brush within Photoshop. So I wanna show you the final outcome first. So I'm gonna show you how to take that scan and Typically when you have a new brush, it's gonna show up like this, which is not workable at all. You can see it repeating. It's not gonna be a very good texture brush within Photoshop if you wanna add some extra handmade feel or some extra depth to your artwork. It's better to create a little more variation. So I'm gonna show you how to take it from here, which is the default settings in Photoshop, to a brush that looks more like this or behaves more like this, which is far more pleasing to the eye. It seems more randomized and more believable as a real unique texture. So we're just going to come back to our original scan. I'm going to walk you through all the steps that I took and we're going to have that really nice, beautiful texture brush uh, in Photoshop for us to use. So I've got the scan. You can see this is the last trick that we went over. Um, hit the link in the video description if you want to see that video on how to make these yourself. And what you're going to do is just scan it in. I've got a Canon MP3620 printer. It's really affordable. I'll leave a link in the video description for that as well. I love this printer scanner combo. It works really Really well for all of my artwork. So I've scanned this in at 300 DPI and it's just black and white so there's no color here at all and you can just scan it in as a black and white image. And once you bring it into Photoshop we need to enhance our blacks and brighten up our whites so we just get black and white throughout everything. Right now you can see there's tones of gray in here so we want to reduce that and just really pump up our blacks. So my favorite way of doing this is by utilizing the levels and brightness and contrast adjustments. So my adjustments are right here. If you don't have this palette showing up for you you can get to it by going window adjustments and it'll pop open and the first thing you want to do is just hit this levels adjustment right here so this will increase the contrast between our blacks and our whites pretty substantially so what I'm gonna do is toggle this black node closer to the middle and as I do that you can see my blacks are getting far darker and if I toggle the white towards the middle um, you can see that the whites are getting very bright so my grays are almost non-existent now and if you want to push things a little bit further you can just hit this little brightness contrast adjustment and just up the contrast. I like upping the contrast and actually reducing the brightness so I get those darks coming through. It just gives me a lot more texture. You can see especially this area. I got more texture showing up when I reduced the brightness. So once you're happy with it, this looks really good to me. So next I'm going to double click in my background to unlock it, hit OK. And then I'm just going to merge all these together. So I held shift clicked to select everything, right click, merge layers. And now I've got everything on one layer. Now what we need to do in order to create a working brush, we need to remove all of the white here. So then all we have is our black showing up, which works as our brush. So in order to do that, my quickest, best way to do it, the way I like to work, is just by hitting your magic wand key, which is is W on your keyboard and you're just going to click anywhere in the white to select the white and then you want to go up here and go select similar and this will just select all the white in your entire artboard and then you're just going to delete. So now I've got all the white removed. I can deselect this by hitting Command D or Control D on a PC. And now what you wanna do is just hit M on your keyboard and you're just going to draw a bounding box around your texture. So make sure you encompass all the texture that you want to use for your brush. So this looks pretty good for me. And then what you're going to do once it's selected, you're going to go over here and go edit, define brush preset. So you can just put in whatever you want. So I'm just going to go texture one and hit OK. And now you're going to create a brand new document. So I have a new document. Let me get rid of what I did here. And this is just 11 inches by eight and a half inches tall, but create it however you'd like. So now we need to come in and start adjusting our settings for our brush because as the default, if I hit B right now, it's just gonna default to what we just created. And if you come over to your brush palette, your brush presets right here, you can get to that by going window brush presets and then here's your brush. And it should be, it should show up at the very bottom of your palette. So this is the brush that we just created and you can see it's got that repeating that we don't really like. So now we're going to go in and edit it. So you want to come over here to your brush settings. So you can also get to that by going window brush and that'll pop open. And the first thing you want to do is just come over here where it says brush tip shape. And I like reducing my spacing down here to about six to eight. And this just puts the texture closer together. You can see it's repeating much 
faster now, but once we start altering it, you're gonna get more variation if you have a lower spacing percentage right here. So I like keeping it like the five to 8% range is fine. Um, and then your size, it's just whatever size you want your default brush to be. This is a fine size, it doesn't really matter, um, just depending on what your usage is. So I'm gonna keep this nice and big so we can see it really well as I work. Okay, so then the other thing is just your angle that you have it at, like if you have a brush that's more upright um, like if I had created a brush out of one of these tape textures right here, um, maybe I want it to be more horizontal or more vertical, that's where you would adjust that is right here. Um, you would just toggle this around. You can see it's kind of moving in this preview area right here, but I'm just going to leave it um, to its default setting. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is come into Shape Dynamics. So we're just going to check that and make sure it's highlighted so you can adjust these settings right here. And under Shape Dynamics, I actually like adjusting the size jitter just slightly. So I'm going to do 15% right here. And for my minimum diameter, I'm actually going to increase this all the way to 100. And you can see how the brush starts changing down here slightly as you adjust your settings. I'm going to change the angle jitter as well to 100%. And you can see that this changes it pretty dramatically. So I went from, let me show you what zero looks like. I went from this to this. So that's a pretty substantial change already, but we're still getting a little bit of repeating up towards the top of the brush. So we're gonna fix the rest of this, but we're already well on our way. So from here, we're gonna keep everything else exactly the same, and then we're gonna go to scattering. So just click here and make sure it's highlighted. I like checking both axes, so we just get a little more variation. And then I also like adjusting my scatter just slightly. So I'm gonna do another 15% right there. And if you have a less dense texture, like mine's pretty dense, you can see all these little marks in it. If it's a little more sparse, then I would increase my count to two right here just to make a little more of a dense texture. But this one's pretty dense already, so I don't need to do that. You can see the change in this um, between the two. You can see it gets really dark, and I like this variation that I'm getting um, in the middle part. So I'm going to bring this back down to one. Okay, so I'm going to remove that and we are well on our way. So the very last thing that I look for is I want to make sure that smoothing is checked right here and protect texture is checked right here. If you'd like to push things a little bit further, I would play around with transfer right here and you can even play around with combining it with a pre-existing brush under dual brush. But for the purposes of this tutorial, keeping things super simple, especially for beginners, this is all you really need to create that nice variation in texture. And even if I have a smaller texture, you can see how beautiful it looks right there. So you can add this to borders, you can add this within vector shapes to add a little bit of contrast, a handmade feel, and that beautiful texture coming through. It can simulate depth as well. Um, so there's a lot of uses for this, and we're going to get into those types of uses in the next couple of weeks. We're going to have some tutorials of integrating this beautiful texture brush within some vector illustrations. To maintain the settings that you've already established right here so you don't lose them later on when you switch between different brushes, all you want to do is toggle this little upper corner um, toggle down and choose new brush preset and then just name this texture one I'm just gonna name this edited so I can keep track and then whenever you need it it's right here at the bottom of your palette so you can see this is the original one let me create a new layer so you can see everything really well so this was the original and this is our brand new texture that we just made. So you can see the beautiful difference between the two. There's a lot of variation and we completely eliminated this really obnoxious repeat that we had on our original settings. So that's how to create a grit Photoshop texture brush in Photoshop. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please subscribe. I release a new design tutorial every single Tuesday. And don't forget to head on over to my blog, every-tuesday.com for even more design tutorials and a bunch of design freebies. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next week.